best point guard in the NBA in an article that's posted on ESPN.com. George Carl, who spent 25 seasons coaching in the league, most recently with the Denver Nuggets, he says it's Tony Parker. Here's the quote. I'm tired of not giving Tony Parker any credit. Parker, over the past three or four years, has been the best point guard in the NBA. Now, is he the most talented point guard? No. Does he put up the best numbers? No. But consider what he does for his team, a team that has been dominating. He's their motor, their energy, their delivery. While Chad Ford, our NBA insider, believes it's Chris Paul. I think Paul is not only the best point guard in the league, I think he's on par as a player with LeBron James and Kevin Durant. Paul hasn't had the players around him necessarily to make that push. He might have been able to last season if it wasn't for the massive distraction Los Angeles Clippers faced toward the end of the season. I think you can make an argument that he might someday be the best point guard ever. Last night on that TNT show, Charles Barkley also weighed in on who might be the best point guard in the league, and he said he believes it's Tony Parker. He tops that position. That was Barkley's thoughts, paraphrasing here. The question is, who do you believe is the best point guard in the NBA? Stephen A. Smith? Well, I believe it to be Chris Paul, and allow me to explain, Skip Bayless. Um, uh, you know, and, and before I say anything else, Skip Bayless, <laughs> let me let me let my audience know. My radio show, Sirius uh -huh. XM, Mad Dog Sports Radio, Channel 85, 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time every day. I will have Chris Paul on today. Oh, Had the great so Michael Jordan why. on yesterday, Skip. Uh, Called that for 20 minutes. That's why. I appreciate why. that. Oh, so the one and only, the on. GOAT, Stephen the greatest a. of all time. You're about to be. Thank a. you so much, Stephen bro. A. Stephen A., you're being biased. Bias now. Yeah. Is that why? Is that why you're about to say he's well, the best no, no, point guard? No, no, no I'm, inf I'm, I'm informing. I'm informing my listeners and my viewers. But here's the deal. <laughs> mm. Tony Parker is a champion. So in real, it, it, to be real about it, I can't refute anybody who would say that Tony Parker is better. He's a four-time champion. You can't. You can't compare to that. Chris Paul doesn't have a championship, nor does he even have an appearance in an NBA Finals. So I do understand those who would look at Tony Parker, the fact that he's a career 18-point-per-game scorer, six assists, uh, shooting 49% from the field, four-time champion. Uh, th there's no refuting that. It's just that when I look at Chris Paul, career 18 points, 10 assists a game, shoot 47% from the field, the things that he does, Tony Parker doesn't even average a steal a game. Chris Paul averaged better than two a game. That factors into the equation. But I look at Chris Paul, Skip Bayless, and I look at what he's had to work with compared to Tony Parker, his ability to be a floor general and an orchestrator. Tony Parker, if I want a scoring point guard, this clearly that's not who Chris Paul is. Even though he can score, that's not what he is. He is a floor general. He is an extension of a coach on the floor. I think Tony Parker is more of a scoring point guard with the abilities to run a team if necessary, but that isn't necessarily his game. On San Antonio, he fits. There's no question about it. He deserves a lot of credit. Can't take anything away from him. But when I think quintessential prototypical point guards, I lean on Chris Paul. But again, I can't refute anybody who would think differently because Tony Parker has four rings. He's a big-time player. I just don't think that he has the responsibilities that Chris Paul has to a team. Tony Parker has to play his role. Chris Paul has to pretty much be everything um, in terms of a floor general on the court, and I think that's the difference. But that's the only reason that I would pick Chris Paul over Tony Parker because in terms of ability, Tony Parker is big time. So tell Chris I said hi. When you talk to him today. <laughs> I will. I will do that. You know what I think. I agree with Coach Carl. For once, I agree with Charles Barkley. Tony Parker, for the last three or four years, has been the best point guard in the NBA. But I don't want to be a hypocrite here because you know I have an aversion to shoot first point guards. I don't consider Tony in that category. Tony is more of the combo guard, if you will. He can do both. He's a 50-50. He can score when necessary. He can really distribute when necessary because he does one thing better than Chris Paul does to me. As far as pure point skill goes, nobody can penetrate and discombobulate the way Tony Parker can. 
and, and it will benefit him to either go ahead and score the bucket or he'll dish it at the last second to Tim Duncan for an easy bucket or kick it out to the corner to Manu for a three or whatever happens. Tony has a, a growing feel for the game, and he didn't always have it. He has grown his game over the last four years. And by the way, he is starting to make threes like crazy, and he made the three. I know it was just game one of 82 last night, but with 102 left in the game last night, whew, he, he made another big-time shot. Which is why, if look, I, I hear what you're saying about point guard skills. I'm going to give you this on this debate. If we're talking about just pure point, distributing the basketball, I will give Chris Paul the edge over Tony Parker. But if we're talking about basketball player, I'm taking Tony Parker every night of the week over Chris Paul. And look, I know you're going to say this is unfair. But, but look at the playoff records. You, you can, I, I know what you're going to say. Oh, he had Duncan, he had Manu, he had Pop. But Tony Parker, his postseason record is 122 wins and 74 losses and, of course, four rings. Think about that, 122 and 74 as the starting point guard. Chris Paul's postseason record is 22 and 31. So Tony's won 122, Chris Paul's won 22 games in the postseason. Now, is that fair to Chris Paul? Well, I've told you before. You know, you know. Look, look, look just real quick, let me finish. I, we kidded about this last year, and I started calling him CP0 because he has, he has zero rings. Well, obviously, Chris Paul is entering his 10th year in the league, and he's never even been to a conference final. This is CP3 we're talking about. Now... Stephen A. Smith says It'll CP3's happen. team is going to win it all this year. Wow. Okay. Well, show me, Chris, because I'm, I'm all eyes now. And, and you could be right. I hope for his sake you were right about this because he has a whole lot more to prove in the postseason because that is unacceptable given his ability to, to have 22 postseason wins well, see, and 31 you, you losses. Could say, you, you could say it's unacceptable. You could say it's unacceptable given his ability. When you're a miniature guard, I think that it does. I think, And you're a clear, quintessential point guard. I think it's different. I think that if you're a scoring machine, the Kobe's, the MJ's, the LeBron's, the D-Wade's, et cetera, I think in Melo's case, I think it's more unacceptable for Melo to be to, to having never played in an NBA Finals than it is for Chris Paul to having never played in an NBA Finals because Melo 6'8", 240, it could score from anywhere and could take over a game all by his lonesome for a myriad of reasons. That's not necessarily the case with Chris Paul, even though we've seen Chris Paul do it. So so I think that that needs to be taken into consideration. You also got to look at the fact that, Skip, when you draw, draw that discrepancy, that discrepancy, Tony Parker has 122 playoff victories. Chris Paul has 22. Do you think for one second there is a 100-game discrepancy in wins, in playoff wins between the two just because of their two abilities? Of course not. No. Nope. It's because of the team that 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 Tony Romo, Tony Tony Romo, Tony Parker is playing for and the I'm coach he's that he's Tony playing Romo. for <laughs> as opposed to Chris Paul. Yep. When you when you got Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili and you got Greg Popovich and RC Buford and okay. the Spurs organization and the horses that they have surround Tony Parker with, that has a lot to do with why they've got 100 more playoff victories than Chris Paul. Okay, but but listen, the engine of all those playoff wins the, the detonator is the little man here. He's maybe two inches taller than Chris Paul. What do you give Chris? Six feet tall? Is he Make six? up your mind. What, what do you... Make up your mind, Skip. You said it was Manu Ginobili on many no, occasions. I mean, he, he's the big playmaker, but Tony Parker consistently makes big shots and big plays in the biggest games. In Game 7 against Dallas, and I keep telling you, their hardest playoff series, it certainly wasn't the Miami Heat in the finals. It was Dallas in the first round. It went to Game 7 at home, and in the first half, go look at the numbers. Tony Parker just took the game over. He will do that. Manu makes but that skip. big single shot. If I want somebody one shot for my life, it's Ginobili. Yeah. And he made one again last night and at the end of the quarter. Yeah. But, Skip, you repeatedly say... That and listen, when Chris Paul was in New Orleans, his best teammate was David West. When he's in LA, no, wait, wait he's the best guy. He had Tyson is Blake Chandler. Griffin. He had Pacia, right? 
He had Mo really? Pete. Well, those <laughs> that were pretty, we well they, they took mean, San Antonio really? to seven the, the, games. The, 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 they, 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 they they can play. They can play, but they also but we understood there were limitations to that squad considering no, what was no. out west. When you look at Chris Paul in Los Angeles, you I repeatedly say it's Blake Griffin, but he's relatively inexperienced. And he's a guy you weren't sold on. Whereas with Tony Parker, you've got Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili for the whole ride. For the okay. whole ride. All right, Stephen and Greg A. Popovich for the whole ride. All right, ride. Stephen A., let me ask you a question. I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. The other day when we were talking about one player, Clutch Gene, the, you want to ha him to have the uh, the ball in his hands when we want to win the game. He said Manu and you said Steph Curry. You still don't think Steph Curry is the best pe point guard, yes. though. You're giving it to Chris Paul. No, not the best pure point guard, but I just I love Steph Curry's game, and I love the threat that he poses because he could shoot so well, plus he could boogie on you. He doesn't need help. He can create his own shot off of his own handle. He's coming, but he's not as effective as those guys in terms of running a team yet, okay. and he's not as effective on the defensive side of the ball either, but he is my favorite player to watch. All right. Okay, my bottom line on Chris Paul is I greatly, greatly respect his feel for the game and his uns selfish feel for the game but in the biggest games on the biggest stages I want my basketball in Tony Parker's hands most of the game Skip wants to give it to Tony Parker Stephen A wants to give it to CP3 who will be on his radio show later on today and you skip you say hi to no. CP3 right well don't get mad we're about to do some some Twitter stuff we'll, you, we'll get back to you in a minute no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not mad. I was saying that I didn't say that. I mean, that's a different question about you, whose ball you want the, the mm -hmm. hey, whose hands you want the ball in at the end. Of course, you know Tony Parker because he can score. I'm just saying quintessential point guard running a show and orchestrator. Yeah. that would be Chris Paul. That's who Two you want. Two different questions. They made their. They've made their cases, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we